Are you in a hurry and can't find your keys again? Then what you need is the No Worries Key Fob. This astonishing Bluetooth low energy device will help you find your keys in no time. One button press on the convenient remote and there are your keys! You will never miss your appointments again. Order now and get a coin cell battery for free! Hi, today I will present you my Keyfinder mini project. It's a quite small key fob that you can use to find the keys whenever you lost them. Uh, this remote is turned on and the Bluetooth module connects with the Bluetooth module here in the key fob. So it's blinking when it's not, when it's not connected and yeah, it's continuously lit when it's connected. Then I can just press this button and this buzzer here in the module gives the sound. The remote is quite simple. It has a coin battery, a power switch, um, 80 mega 8 a microcontroller on a socket and uh, some buttons. This button pairs uh, the HM10 module and uh, this button just is connected to the 80 mega. When it's pressed the 80 mega sends the UART command to the HM10 module that uh, remotely turns on a pin on the module on here. So I'm using this 80 mega because it has built in UART and I don't have any problems to send messages to the HM10 module. This part on the circuit here is just this part from the sheet of the HM10 module. The receiving second pin RX is connected to the TX pin of the 80 mega. The button for the buzzer here is pulled down by a high resistor to ground and when it's pressed it's just pulling up using 3 volts. This is connected to PD2. The 80 mega senses that button and sends the corresponding string over UART to the HM10 module. When you are using UART on the 80 mega you need an external crystal and uh, the 22 picofarad caps that I'm using here. Otherwise the internal oscillator isn't precise enough and you will get garbage over UART. The crystal is connected to XTEL1 and XTEL2. You have to set the corresponding fuses. I left the remote prototypic since I want to extend it for later projects. The key fob is just wrapped with some tape here. It has a used lithium polymer battery. I don't know the exact capacity but I assume it's 80 milliamp hours. Because of the cool power saving stuff I implemented it can run this fob for about 9 days. I'm showing off this fob for 5 days now and still runs. It is built up on a single sided PCB. The 80 tiny 24 uses a MOSFET to turn on the Bluetooth module and checks if there is a connection. If there is no connection it just powers off for another 8 seconds. There are some caps for stability and the power to the HM10 module is lowered with this uh, simple diode by 0.6 volts. This is necessary since the battery can be charged up to 4.2 volts. The sound is generated with this old buzzer that I got from my Nokia mobile phone. The AT Tiny runs with 1 MHz. The pins are configured like so. The LED pin of the HM10 module is configured to be on when there is a connection. This is sensed by PB1 of the AT Tiny. PB0 sends its PIO from the HM10 module that we control with the button remotely. When the button is pressed we generate output noise on PA7. PB2 is connected to the N-channel MOSFET here. It is used to turn on the HM10 module from time to time. It's like a switch that is connected to the ground of the module. The gate is also connected to a pull-down resistor. I have to charge the module with my bench power supply each 9 days. Let's check out how I built these things. Of course I started with a breadboard design. Even though this 80 mega is rated for 5 volts, it still runs at 3 volts from a coin battery. These are the AT commands that I have used to configure the remote. Next step was to build the design of the key fob.
For this design I have used the buzzer from an old mainboard, but this was too huge for the final design and the noise of the small one is loud enough. These are the AT comments that I have used to configure the key fob. My first code of the key fob was running the AT Tiny all the time. This consumed around 650 microamps and around 10 milliamps when pulling the Bluetooth module. This wasn't acceptable since the microcontroller has more power saving capabilities. After adding the power off mode and the watchdog timer, the consumption went down to 5 microamps during the idle phase. This phase lasts for 8 seconds and then the IT Tiny restarts again and checks the Bluetooth. I haven't used a voltage regulator on the breadboard, but I have added it to the PCB circuit since I would get up to 4.2 volts from the battery. I have added some pads for the in-system programmer as well as some additional points for the HM10 module and 3 spots for some additional caps. The regulator didn't work quite well, so I just replaced it with the diode for its voltage drop. The device worked already but it wasn't perfect. The 10mA while it's connected was ok, but the 33mA while beeping could drain the battery low before you find it. And also there was the problem that at 3.5 volts, the buzzer let the voltage drop so low that the AT Tiny restarted. I improved the beeping function as you will see later and added the plant in caps. It worked much better now. Even on 3.3 volts it was able to beep for some time. If you are doing low current measurements like this, it's really important to disconnect your ISP from the circuit. You can't see it, but these crocodile clamps are not connected. I was able to reduce the power consumption of the beeping to about 16 milliamps without any noticeable volume drop. The consumption during power off didn't change. I connected the battery, tested it, grinded off the excess PCB a bit and just wrapped it with some tape. And finished was the key fob. Next step was to build the remote. In contrast to the key fob, I wanted to keep the remote simple and show you that it's not mandatory to use some etching. As mentioned before, I want to have the possibility to add some stuff for later projects. If you enjoyed watching this video, just subscribe and tune in for other projects.